show you two things that I think that you're not doing on the bench press that could really help you impress people with your bench pressing because that's what it's all about right it's all about how much you bench let's face the facts no one cares about your deadlift no one cares about your squat and it's impossible to have abs so why even bother let's just work on benching let's just be a bunch of dudes a bunch of bros and just talk about how much you bench so in order to improve your bench press uh, I think one of the most important things to do is to make sure that you on the way down that you come down like hell my brother did a movie a long time ago called bigger stronger faster I'm sure many of you have seen it if you haven't seen it I think it's back on Netflix again anyway you can look it up it's on YouTube it's all over the place but when he went and filmed Ben Johnson who's one of the greatest sprinters of all time yes I know he did performance enhancing drugs but he's still one of the greatest sprinters of all time uh, what he said simply was when the gun went off he went like hell I think sometimes we're forgetting about going like hell. You ever watch an MMA fight or a boxing match and you're like, did these guys forget that it's a fight? <laughs> like, they got all this weird strategy and they're sizing each other up and they forgot, like, I'm just trying to kill this other dude. Same thing sometimes in the gym. We're just trying to kill, it's all we're trying to do. So we can worry about tucking our elbows and we can have our chest up and we can push with our feet and we can do all these fancy things that you need to do, which I'll show you how to do. But sometimes the most important thing is to squeeze the bar and just go like hell. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right here. So obviously we need to set up. I always say it's always good to have a routine. Most people don't like routine, but human beings respond really well to routines, doing the same thing every day, waking up super early every day, getting a lot of work done every single day, making your bed at the same time, scheduling your food, like all that stuff, scheduling appointments. It's a good surefire way to make sure that you're carrying through with your disciplines every day. But even on the bench press, we know that when we go to a competition that this bench press might not be there. There'll be a different bench press. There'll be a different set of lights. There'll be different uh, people around me. So what can I control? I can control what I do. So I can have my same weird ceremony, my same weird routine every single time. And nothing feels foreign to me because I feel the same and everything I do feels the same. So for some reason, I don't know why, I always kind of hike up the shorts almost like the way that uh, the Iron Sheik used to do before he'd throw somebody in the camel clutch. I always do that, I sit on the bench, and then for some reason, I don't know why, but I get back up, and I usually breathe a little bit right here, then I sit back down, and then I go. Whatever routine you need to do to feel comfortable on the bench, on the deadlift, on the squat, whatever you need to do, do it. So now I'm ready to go, I did my one rep squat for some reason. Now I'm gonna lay back on the bench and the first thing I like to do when I lay back is to lay flat. That way I know what sucks, that would be the worst position to bench from. And then I'm gonna put myself in the best position to bench from, which is just taking your shoulders and trying to kind of lower them and raise your chest up. If I'm just to try to keep it as simple as possible. You're trying to pull your chest up, maybe even pull your shoulder blades back. But a big mistake people make is they go like this with their shoulders and then they unwrap the weight with their shoulders. And then when they go to press, they hurt their pec or their shoulder because they're pressing with their shoulders. We want to press with our lats, so we want to try to pull the chest up, just to keep it very simple, and have the shoulders down and back. When we take the weight out, we're not pushing the weight up. We're not unracking like this. We're actually pulling the weight out. We're trying to pull downward, like we're pushing down on somebody, right? Like you're doing a pullover. You ever do a lat pullover? It's one of those guys. So we're gonna pull the weight out of the rack, make sure that we're sturdy, make sure the legs are involved in the movement, make sure our legs are sturdy. And then what are we gonna do? We're gonna grip the bar and we're gonna go like hell. On the way down, you're trying to bend the bar. On the way back up, you're trying to spread the bar apart. On the way down, you're trying to bend the bar. On the way up, you're trying to spread the bar apart. I was once asked how much should I bend the bar? <laughs> I'll leave that question for you guys, right? So here we go. I'm flat. This is the shittiest position to be in. You'll see some people sometimes do it with their feet on the bench and different things like that. Again, whatever way you want to establish, this is a flat position. I can feel my lower back on the bench. This would be a shitty place to bench from. I wouldn't have good stability. And my range of motion would be increased. The two things that we're after with positioning is we're trying to decrease the range of motion and we're trying to increase our stability. 
You got it? You on page 43? You writing that shit down? You guys better know these answers because if you don't have your number two pencil and if you're not ready to go when this video is over with, you're all going to fail and you're not going to be able to pass and you're not going to have a better bench press. So here we go. Whatever grip you normally grab with is fine. Just always make sure your grip is even. For me, this is my comp grip, my competition grip. This is the grip that I found over the years. is the strongest grip for me. I'm going to use the bar as we always do here at Super Training Gym to get in position. So I'm going to throw my foot that way and pull my chest up. Throw my foot that way, pull my chest up. Throw my foot this way as a counterbalance and I'm using the bar to pull myself up and then I'm tucking my shoulder blades into my back pocket. Then I put my feet down and I'm pushing towards Wayne, who's my lifter offer guy. And I'm actually gonna push my butt up off the bench, which is illegal once the lift starts. But once the, uh, but if I, if I put my butt back down on the bench before I actually press it, then everything's all good. So I like to lift it, lift my butt off the bench on purpose right here, like yay. And then I'm gonna lift it out. So here we go, one, two, three, up. Go like hell. So when it's so when he, I want to scare the shit out of him. I want him to be like thinking he did something wrong, almost like I'm trying to yank the weight from him. So here we go again. Don't blink. Up. Go like hell. Bring that weight out. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it fast. Drop it furious. Here we go. I'm gonna show you again. Up, down fast, up fast. You're trying to break shit. You're trying to be violent. You're trying to push with everything that you got. So that's the one thing that you're not doing is you're not bringing the weights down fast enough. The second thing you're not doing is you're not pulling the weights into you. So a good way to practice pulling the weight into you is to throw on a slingshot. Any sort of back training is help, gonna help teach you this too. You can go on a seated row, go with a wide grip and pull. But I really like doing it this way with the slingshot. This is gonna get the rear delts. It's also gonna benefit your squat a lot because now you'll end up with a shelf, you'll end up with something to bench off of. So hands are out like I'm gonna bench and I'm gonna to pull towards me. Once I pull towards me and it's already hard and difficult, I try to pull even more. <clears throat> Try to do multiple reps like this. You can just do this right in between your bench press. What you don't want to do is just be going like this. It's not a bad warm up for the shoulder, but you want to continue to pull into you and get tight. Pull into you, get tight. That's going to teach you how tight that your lats should be during the bench press. And another thing you can use the slingshot for is right here. We'll set up on the bench again and I can learn how to pull weights into me as I'm actually going through the movement. I can practice it right here on the bench. So again, that other movement, chest up, Pulling the elbows back behind the body. Once it feels hard, once it's tight, and once it feels like you can't go any further, pull the elbows back further, pull the chest up even more. Try not to do weird stuff with your neck. I see a lot of times when people are doing stuff, they go like this with their neck. Two, three days later, like, man, what did I do to my neck? It was all the stupid shit you were doing in the gym that you weren't paying attention to. So now we're gonna bring the weight down really crazy because we got a slingshot on to protect us. So it doesn't have to be crazy. Um, it, it needs to be controlled still. So as fast as I was going on those first few, you probably can't mimic that yet because you might not just be in that spot just yet in your life, but you still want to try to be quick with it. You want to be explosive. Oh. Show you again. So that one I was just trying to set up first a little bit. Make sure I had it right. Go again. Up. As soon as it's locked into place, you're gonna pull into you. You can practice, you can do like 20 sets of one rep like this right here. Up. You see you can get a little bit better with it each and every time. Whoo! That hurts, that's hard to do. And the reason it's hard to do is because I put every single thing that I have into it, put every single muscle fiber that you have into it. The bench press isn't an upper body exercise. 
it's an entire body exercise. So people talk about leg drive, it's, it's body drive. You want your whole body into it. Just like if you were to throw a punch, I'm sure I could throw a pretty good punch with my upper body after years of bench pressing and stuff, but probably wouldn't be that great, especially if I hit like another professional fighter just with just my arm, right? They'd probably like, get out of here. But maybe I'd have better chance if I threw my body weight or if I learned how to throw punches better for a few weeks. If I learned the footwork, if I learned how to get all my weight into it, learn how to get all your weight into your bench presses, learn how to drop those weights, be violent, be aggressive. Don't be a... Anyway, strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never strength. If you guys have any other comments about the bench press, you want to see other things on the bench press, you want me to go over how to do incline, decline, decline bench. Where's the decline bench going? I saw a quote from my boy Kelly Sturette the other day. He said, you ever wake up on a random Saturday and get up and sit on the side of your bed and just think to yourself, where in the world has the decline bench gone? I think I was the only person that responded yes to that, that question. I've been wondering the same thing. What about 35 pound plates? You don't see those bitches anymore either, do you? Something weird is happening in strength and fitness. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you all later.